um, in this last hour, uh, we start uh, trying to do some intermediate uh, Python scripting. The idea is to complicate a bit uh, the basics of Python that you have seen in the last lessons and the last lab, so that we are on one side ready for the next lab, that will be on Monday, and on the other side we start um, interacting a bit with systems, in this case would be the, the local system, so the, the computer on which we are running. Uh, the idea is to show that it's quite easy in Python to, to get the system start behaving somewhat uh, uh, a little bit intelligent, more intelligent than a, a stupid computer and uh, to provide some feedback which is not the, the usual console uh, uh, typing that you have seen in the, in the traditional basic Python exercises. Um, there are more exercises that, uh, than the one uh, we will do today because time is, uh, is running up, but uh, you can try them by yourself and you get the solution also on GitHub, they are already there. So if you want to have a look, and if you have your PC here with you, you can also try to, to solve the exercise with, uh, with me and see if there are any problems. Um, okay, let's start. So first exercise, which is the, the simplest. Let's start, make the computer speech. So, um, we want to build a program uh, that makes the computer speak uh, text strings, which are given by us on, on, the, on the console. So we just type the text and the computer reads the text. That's the idea. And as a general guideline, this is more, much like uh, an exercise in the lab, uh, and uh, this is purposely written like this because, uh, uh, so that you can get used to the, the kind of exercises you, you find in the lab and you are already ready to take all them. Um, so the, 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 the suggestion about on, on how uh, the program must interact with the user is there and uh, says that the program should ask for words until the word exit is. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay. Um, anyway, the program should ask uh, new text to speech um, until uh, the user uh, types the word exit. That means close the program. In that case, the program should greet the user saying goodbye and close. So uh, the most difficult part here, as you may imagine, is speaking, the speak part. Okay? And actually we do nothing on that. We just leverage an online service. So that's also the kind of state of mind we, we need to apply when we try to take all both the exercise in the lab and the projects. Try to don't reinvent the wheel and to, to leverage the tools that are already there. So here we don't want to build a complete text-to-speech program because we are not able to do that in a course and we don't, have, we don't have time. We just want to use an external service. And the external service is, uh, for, in our case, the Google text-to-speech service, which is basically a URL to call. You perform a GET request on that, uh, like the one you do with the, with the browser, and you get back an MP3 file. This MP3 file uh, has inside the, the speech corresponding to the text you put as a query in the, in the URL. So in this case, where you have uh, this, okay, let me first find them out. Okay, it's here. Here, when you have a Q equal to hello, this is the string to pronounce, and what you get back is an MP3 saying hello. Okay, that's the general idea. So how can we do this with Python? Yeah, we can try to. I was just wondering if developing from scratch or not. Okay, let's try. So, but in order to avoid giving the wrong solution, I have also the, I'm cheating a bit. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, you find uh, this is exactly the, the list you find on GitHub. So you, if you want to open it and follow on the list, uh, just 
please do. Um, okay, so first, uh, you, you may already tried, you should already have tried or now uh, to create a, a Python project in Eclipse and how to develop a module, but let's edit it again. So let me create a new, yes. Is it better? No. Ah, okay, I see. I don't know. Damn. Okay. Is it nice? Yes, okay. Okay, so let's give you the, the name, TTA, uh, so the, the project will be, um, okay. In class exercise. Grammar version is okay. Interpreter is Python. That's it. Finish. Okay. And here we create a new module. No package for the moment. This is named TTS. Okay. Then. I put here the main. So we have also main. Okay, this is the skeleton. Can you can you see the screen? Should I enlarge the font? Is it okay? Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, first, let's organize the the, the program. Um, when we start solving problems, we need to to first divide the the problem in uh, in small steps that we need, we can address. Um, in this case, it's really simple. The steps are mainly two. One, sending a request to a web server for getting the MP3 file. The second step is to play the MP3 file. And we need to, to figure out how to do those two steps. Um, and since we are making this very simple for this time, uh, we can leverage existing systems on our PC for doing the two stuff, okay? And the first one, for getting the MP3, there is a one command line utility named wget that basically fetches a web page from a server. And this is provided as part of the Linux system. So what we can do is to try to find a way for calling this utility and getting back the MP3 file, storing it locally for the next step. So the idea is that we do not do anything in Python. We just launch the wget program and get back the MP3. Okay, really, really simple. I'm not writing because I want to explain more. First, second, we have this MP3 file. We need to play it. Well, there is another program in Linux which is named mPlayer, that stands for multimedia player. Is inside almost any distribution. So you can either directly use it, or if you don't have it, you, you can just install it using the package manager of your distribution. And also this program is from command line. You can just type mplayer, the name of the file, and the file is played on the audio system of the computer, okay? So what we do basically is to launch two different scripts from our Python script. But let's structure also the, the program in a quite clean way. So we can divide the program in two main parts. One is the, the main, so the, the, the main set of instruction that coordinates the two steps, basically. And the other is the part that uh, performs the text-to-speech. Okay, so let's start from the uh, main part. The main part could be written inside a function. You should know what a function is, otherwise I can explain you. Basically, it's a set of instructions grouped into a, by a name. This is, the name is main. And inside the main, we build up the main loop, which is the one required by the exercise. The program should ask for new texts 
until the, the word exit is typed. In that case, you should greet the user saying goodbye and exit, okay? So this is stuff that should be made by the main function, the coordinating part of the program. So let's start uh, by making place for a string, for, uh, yeah, for the string that the user writes. Okay. So this is, as the name of the variable say, this is a string. And we want to fill the string with the information coming from the console. Okay. Until the information coming from the console is exit. So first, let's cycle while what? The string is not exit. So string is different from exit. Okay? What do we do? Let's type a comment here. We ask the user for the input. Okay? Or the phrase to say, okay? Uh, comments are not readable because they are in gray, but. Um, okay, do you remember how to get input? Some one of you? Row input, okay. So, what we need to type here is string equal to row input, and the parameters is the prompt, right? So, you save your text here, okay? Let's give it also a place for writing text, so I'm just going one line down and showing a prompt sign, which usually is the greater than sign, okay? That's it. After this, we have the string inside the string variable. So what we need to do else is to check if the string is exit. In that case, we will say goodbye. Otherwise, we just speak the string, okay? So let's check if string is equal to exit. Oh, sorry, exit. Say goodbye. So, oh, okay, let's do it like this. Text to say equal to uh, bye. Okay. Health. What else we need to do? If it's not exit, what we need to do is to tackle a bit uh, the characters which are not allowed in the URL. So there are some characters that cannot be put in a URL. We are just putting the, the phrase inside the URL. So we need to replace, for example, um, the spaces, which cannot be in a URL, and replace them with a plus, for example and we can go on, but let's just replace for, for now the, the spaces. So this should be else. Um, text to say. How can I replace a text? You already did uh, the exercise, so you, you can suggest me the, the right solution. Nobody? Okay, let me start writing. String dot, if I want to replace something, replace. Old, new, okay? The old is the space, and the new one will be a plus, okay? This replaces all the spaces in the input string with a plus. And we can do the same for all the other forbidden characters. Let's just do it for the for the space, for now. Okay, now we have the text ready. I can also turn the page, but I know how to go over, <laughs> okay? So what we need to do is to say, okay? So we can say, the 
text is saying. And that's it. Okay? And what say is the other part, the function that downloads, makes the request, downloads the MP3 and plays the MP3. Okay. So let's write the say function. It takes one parameter, which is a string. So let's call this text to say, just to remember, okay? We can also prepare our function for another language. We, will, we are speaking English, so it's the default one, but we can also host some place for other languages. So we can put here a, an additional parameter named language. And we can provide to this parameter a default value that would be English, okay? So here I'm saying that the same function takes two parameters. The first is a variable, the text to say. The second is a variable which, if not given, will take the value en. Okay. Okay, next. We know that the first step is to get in the mp3 and that the script to run is wget. How can I run a script? There is one Python module named OS that basically allows a Python script to call some native operating system process. Okay, so we need it. Let's import OS. Okay. Second, once we got this module, we call the wget script and I need to copy the line because I don't remember it, <laughs> absolutely. But you can get the line from the manual. So the line to call would be wget, the name of the program to call, then some options for the program, minus q, minus u, this part, oh, mod, now we, Okay, this minus u is minus user agent. Here I'm telling to wget script to mimic the Mozilla Firefox browser. So that Google thinks that the asking part is a browser, it's a, it's a Mozilla browser. Okay, so we are cheating a bit on this. Minus o. Uh, o, okay, output. We need to save a file. Let's name it, for example, test mp3. Okay, so here we are saying, okay, call the wget script, make the script behave as Mozilla Firefox for the, for the server, and save the uh, response as a test mp3 file in the local directory. Okay, so this is the line. What else, the URL? URL should be here. It, the URL should be between quotes, and here we face the first problem, because the quotes are also the delimiter for our string. Well, no problem, we are in Python. Let's just change the, delim the delimiter from double quotes to single quotes. Okay? So single quotes, and here we type the URL, which is the one you have on the slide. I just copy the URL because I don't remember it. So HTTP um, slash, slash uh, translate uh, dot google dot com slash translate underscore TTS. I E equal U T F H and T L O U T F and T L equal okay, what's T L? Translation language. We said that this translation language is by default English. But we want to 
face the case in which there are other languages to say. Okay, so here we need to put the value of the language parameter. So let's close the limiter and just add here language. Okay. Okay, then we continue and, and we add to the query the query parameter and we concatenate another time the string. So here we had the text. The text is contained in the text to say variable. And finally, we need to close the quotes in the command line we are sending to WK. So there should be this closing quote, okay? So basically we compose the URL and we filled some of the URL fields with the values of the variables. Okay. Now we get the line. Let's also let, uh, put a comment here in the wget command. And now let's fetch the URL. So OS. I said that we use the OS system. One uh, function of the OS module is the system function that calls the system command line. So system wget line. Okay, that's it. We executed the wget script now. And if everything goes well, and we don't have made any error, we should have, after the execution of this instruction, an mp3 file named test.mp3 on the file system, in the same place where the script is. So next, what we need to do is to play the mp3 file. And we do it in the same way by calling the mplayer program. So. How can we call an external program? OS.system. Okay, let's put a comment here, play. So OS.system. Command, which command should we call? M player, plus a couple of options. So minus quiet, that means do not show any interface. Minus no. Lerch, okay, minus MSG level or equal to minus one. This means do not write anything on the console, okay? So the messaging level of the player should be disabled. Finally, the name of the file, which is test.mp3. Okay, that's it. If everything is fine, it should work. Let's save. Um, if I can, okay. Let me connect to the internet, otherwise we cannot do anything. Check the network. Okay. Just one second for authenticating. this here. Okay, should be here. And we should be him, so. Okay, let's try to play this. Run as Python run. Okay, let me check. What happened? What happened for you? That's an error. 
it's easy to spot it. What? Yeah, that, that's a, yeah, that's an error because it, this is, with the semicolon, it's not a Pythonic code, but it works. But that's a bigger error, easy to spot. When main is called? Never. We wrote the functions, but we never called the function. Okay? So just pay attention to everything. Because one gets involved by the problem and then forgets simple things. We need to call it. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Let's try another time. Oh, fine. At least we got a prompt here. Okay? Now that we got the prompt, try to directly type exit. Nice. That's nice. Why? Because it works, but we are giving the wrong options to wget. So the result of this first execution is that our idea works. We are actually calling the wget script, but we have made some mistake in the command line, okay? So wget invalid option, and there is this dash, which is not an option. Okay, let me put here a space, and try again. Oh, maybe just up the former one, and install everything, okay? Let's take another time. Just ramping up the, okay, it is waiting, okay, do nothing, so s some other error. What happens if we have errors? Debug, the right word, debug. Okay, had a breakpoint here and Sorry, I'm a little bit slow in this first time, but so that you can also see how, how to debug a program. Okay, we are here. While well, string is different from exit, string now is nothing. Okay, let's go over. Row input. Okay, I can put it here. Exit. Okay. Now, string is exit, text to say goodbye, okay, it's there, say, waiting, okay, so, where is the error, if there's an error, inside the same function. But these are the kind of uh, mental processes you, you need to implement when you are debugging, okay? So finding where the error is. Okay. So let's get to here. I'll go to breakpoint. Start again in debug. Okay, we insert the text here, exit. Okay, W get, then the line that we write is this one, W get minus Q minus Q minus O, language, English, query goodbye, it seems to be okay, let's press F6, okay. The problem is in wget, okay? I already know the response, but <laughs> what, what do you think is the problem? Okay, let's play. My network connection is not working. <laughs> Clear. 
okay? Okay, this is due basically to filtering on the, on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Let's go here on my browser. And sorry, sorry, I was a bit cheating. But if I, you look at the browser, unable to connect. Okay, so debug done. Let's try to get a connection now. If the Wi-Fi is working, what you get? If it doesn't work, you can test the program at home. It works. <laughs> okay. I'm just waiting. Okay, the, the Wi-Fi connection here is not so good. Let me try to disconnect and reconnect back. Okay, but anyway, it was useful to understand how to proceed when something doesn't wrong, that doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Now I should get the connection. Let me check. Yes, it seems to be there. Okay. Yeah. You see here that the program continued because finally we got the re response. Okay. Then let, let me check if it works now. Let's go back to the development parts and play. Type here. Hello. Hello. Finally, we got it. Okay. So now that the network is working, everything else is working. So we can say that, nice, the first exercise works. Nice, the first exercise works. Okay. You see a really easy, two lines, two lines to make the computer speak. Okay, so let's exit. Goodbye. That's it. We got it. Okay, next exercise. Some questions, doubts, problems? Is it clear? Okay. Good. Okay. Next exercise. Um, yeah, let me skip that one, which is not interesting. Okay, this one, you can try to do that. using. There is this PSUtil. Uh, module that provides system independent access to the, the operating system performances. So you got the load average, the system version, the, the memory, and so on. If we have time, we can also see the, the solution now, but let me just show you the next exercise, which is important for the next lab, let's say. Okay, so this one is uh, more traditional, no, no speech for the moment. Sorry, but uh, we want to have a program that basically crawls our file system for getting music files, okay? And it takes as a parameter an initial folder and given the root, it crawls all the subdirectories, follows the links and so on for getting back music files and for the sake of simplicity, we just limit the, the type of music files to MP3 and FLAC files, okay? So that is easier. We provide the root folder on the command line. Now you have clear how to do that. You should write it in a second, okay? And again, type in exit, we should exit. Really easy. Still, we can use the OS module. Yes, module enable us to launch a script on the terminal, but also to perform other system level operation. For example, walking directories. So going down on directories. That's it. Should we try? Any question? Okay. Okay, let me cheat another time. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to follow the solution you had so that there are no discrepancies between the lesson and the solution, just for that. But, okay, 
So, um, which are the steps? Uh, how many steps can you imagine in, uh, in solving this problem while I'm creating the module? I hear nothing, no ideas. Okay, again, two steps. N cycle for managing the, the subsequent requests for root folder and search part, the one that given the folder searches the file. Okay? Okay, what should, put you, should we put here to avoid the same error main? Nice, perfect. Okay, okay, let's write the main. Oh, I should define the function. No parameters. Okay. Is it different from the one we wrote uh, 20 seconds ago? No, let's copy it. Okay. Oh. If I don't close the program, it's better. Okay. Let's get this and just filter out what we don't need. So this is basic reuse of code. Okay, perfect. Done. Exit, exit, you know. Goodbye could stay there. But. Okay, now. If the user types exit, we want to print goodbye instead of saying, then we will see how to say it. But if we want to print goodbye, what we need to do is to just type print, okay, and exit. Then instead, if we got a folder, this will this row input then will be not just a string, but the folder, the root folder. So let's update the name so that we remember exactly what this is. Root folder. Okay, so the, the lesson here is to use variables with a meaning, not just A1, A2, B, C, X, but something that remind us what the variable is. Okay, and then we need to call the function for looking inside the directory. So this might be as you want. Let's call it crawl, crawl, okay? Okay, that's the main. Then let's define the function for crawling. It takes the root folder, then what we want to do is to list the music files and since we are spanning across the directories and listing files, why not counting them? Okay, so count and list. For listing, we need the OS module. So let's import the module. Okay. Then we want to count the, fi the files, so let's prepare a counter. And if we find just one file, the count will be one. So I equal, oh, sorry. I equal to one. Okay. This is the counter. Then Let's walk the directory. So start from the root folder, go down, follow the links. That's really complicated. No, we are in Python, one line. That's for every directory. Oh, sorry, 
every directory, which is in os.walk, starting folder that for us is root folder. Then we want to follow the links. So follow links equal to true. Then anything else? Nothing. What? No. Here I'm assigning true to the follow links variable. So it, it is equal because it's an assignment, not, not a condition. Okay. And here I'm assigning directly the value because in this function, you saw that uh, in the previous exercise we had a, a default value where we said language, if it's not given the language variable, then the value should be English. Here, for the walk function, there are more than one default values. So if I don't specify which parameter I want to assign the value true, and I just have true, then that value will be assigned with the first part, to the first parameter in the order, which is not the one I want. So that's why I specify also the name. Just say true should be given to the follow links attribute and to no, no other attributes in the function. Okay. How could I know that work works like this? Because I read the manual. So that means that if you don't know how to do something, you need to pop up your browser and search for Python manual, which is here. This is, oh, let me go to the 2.7, which is our, okay? And here type OS, for example. Search, and this is the module manual. If you go down, 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 at some point, let's try to search it, walk, and here is the manual. Generate the file names in the directory tree by walking the tree either top down or bottom up. You see the parameters, top down, one error, follow links, and so on. That's why I put follow links equal to true, because I want to follow the links, and so on, and so on, okay? So if you need documentation, go there and look at the explanation. So it's not something that I generated or invented by myself, but it's there. I'm just providing the solution without the whole process. Um, okay, now that we know how work for, uh, works, let's go back to development. So now inside the directory variable, which is actually um, a list or an array, but in Python there are not arrays, so it's a list. Um, the second place is the one for the files. Okay, so the first is the directory, the second is the, the file. So here we iterate over files in the current directory. And to do that, we use another for cycle. Okay, for file name in directory second position, third actually. Okay, what should we do? We want to select only which files? Excel file? What? MP3 and flat. Okay. So what we should, what would you do to check that the file is an MP3 or is a flat file? You are writing the program. What 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 would you do? The easiest way. Don't be complicated. Check the, the extension. If the file name ends with .mp3, then it's an mp3 file. If it ends with .flac, it's a flag file, okay? So, and those are the only two 
performance we accept. Okay, how can we check if a string ends with a string? By using the ends with function. So, if file name dot ends with choose a string dot mp3. Okay. Is that yes? Why is the directory at the Because directory is a list. It has several uh, field inside. The first, I don't remember exactly, but I know that uh, the, the 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 part in the in the second position, so uh, directory of one, is the current directory. The part in the second is the list of files in the directory, and I think the first is the root folder. So it's a complex object. Okay, it's a list with fields that might be lists. So in this case, the second item, the third item, the item in position two of this list is again a list containing the file names. And this is specified in the manual. So when you look at the manual, it provides the kind of return types that the function provides, okay? So you don't have to imagine what's inside, you just uh, need to have a look at the, the documentation. So we said we want to accept either MP3 or flag. Or is made by typing or. And this should end with dot flag. Okay. We filter out files. What we need to do next, print the file name, update the counter. Because that, that's what the exercise asks. Let's make it a little bit more complicated with parameters. So the first parameter is a number, the second parameter is a string, and then we want to add here the um, i and the sorry here i name. Then, what's next? Increase the counter with that one file. So i equal i plus one. Okay. Then everything is okay because these are nested cycles. One cycle for getting all the directories stemming from the root folder, and one cycle for getting all the file names inside each directory. Okay, is it, is it clear? Okay, let's save it and try to run the program. At least we have the text here, so let's type exit. Interesting. There is something wrong on our code. Let's try again. Okay, first error. Let's fix it. There was no error, actually I was running the wrong program. <laughs> okay, but it was an error of mine <laughs> because I ran the wrong one, okay? So, the idea is that whenever you get an error, don't be scared, don't be upset, just take it pragmatically and turn up the, the bug feature, okay? Because there will always be errors, always. No way to write one single program with no error. Okay. 
Let's remove the breakpoint. Let's start the program again. Okay, where is my music folder? Should be here. Damn. Okay. Try again. F6, go input. Okay, root folder is okay. Perfect. Crawl. Let's go inside. I equal to one. Directory. Let's have a look at the directory, since we were talking about what's inside. You see it's a tuple. The first name is the root folder. The first, the second, sorry, the first position is the, is the folder. Uh, the second point, directory, squared, bracket, two, is a long list of files. Uh, a long list of directories, sorry. We want the file names, which is Okay, let me, let me re rephrase. Directory of one, long list of directories, and so on and so on. Directory of two will be the files inside the current one, okay? Okay, let's go over. File name, album art, whatever. This is, you know, the part containing the, the JPEG of the, um, cover of the CD. We don't care about it, so let's check the extension. Okay, we don't pass the filter. Go over. This one is another file that we don't care about. Go over. Another. Many. Okay? Okay, this one seems to be a flag file. Print. Is it there? Yeah. I equal I plus one and so on. Run it. Now we got it. Two thousand nineteen seventy three different files. And so on and so on. Okay? Is is it working? Okay, perfect. So you have the solution on uh, on GitHub. Let's move to the next. Any question? You see here, I don't get upset. There are problems. Let's solve the problems. That's that's the mindset you need to have. Okay. Yeah, of course I'm a bit cheating because I know that problems should be there, <laughs> but because I'm teaching you. But okay. Uh, MP3 player. Really? Well, we got the MP3 files. We want to play the files. How can we do that? What What do we know for playing MP3? M player. We use it for playing the MP3 coming from the Google Translation service. So this is a really, really tough program. How many lines? Two. Okay, the one that we need to copy from the TTS example. And the one that we can write in the remaining time, hopefully. So where is my development environment? Should be here. Okay. First, let's create the module, which is here. Let's name it player. Finish main file. Okay, then 
Second, we need a, an MP3 file. Let me copy this, which is the one you have in the solutions. Okay, now we've got an MP3 file. So, how many steps? One, play. So main, it is sufficient. Step, main, okay. What do you put here? In the simplest version, let's assume that we already know the file name so that we can go fast. Just a part of playing. Where it is? In the TTS. In the TTS, we got this one. Name is Blues. Okay. What we need to do also is to import the OS module and here to type name. Okay. Let's try it. And we got it, okay? MP3. Oh well, let's stop the program. Done, it works. But, what happens if I do this? Um, too big. Okay, keeps playing. So, two information. Okay, let, let me stop it. Okay, so when we call the M player in this way, then we are waiting for the process to end. Okay, so exit is not executed until the player stops playing. That means if we are experimenting like this, we need to wait three minutes for each time <laughs> to the, for the, uh, the track to hand. Second, what if we want to stop earlier? Either we can type control plus C on the command line or stop here, but it's not clean. So what can we do is to interface and player with a little bit more complex interaction so that we can not only just launch the script but we can control the script okay how can we control the script this is a command line program so it takes a, what takes a program something in input right and provides something as output okay so what we need to do is to find a way for attaching our script to the input of the program, and if we need to do something on the output, also on the output. Okay? Perfect. How can we do that? There are a couple of modules in Python to do that, so let's modify this script so that we can control the M player. Okay? Not only just launch the program, but control. So what we need is to change module. And the module now is P open, or oh, is, sorry, sub process, which is almost the same. We were, if you remember, we were calling OS system, which basically launches a process on the system with the M player. We do the same, but in a more structured way. A, from this model, we just need some module, some classes that are named pipe and popen. So popen, process open, and pipe. Um, 
from out, sorry. We should be from. Okay, so I'm telling to the interpreter, from the whole subprocess package, just take those two parts. Then, let's use the process open and the pipe to do this. So, process open. Um, it was like this. Same common line, almost the same. So, P open. The process to open, M player. M player, but in this case, we don't want the M player to play freely, but we want to control it. So, we need to change a bit its command line. We keep the quiet option. We had the slave option saying, okay, you cannot work alone, you are my slave. <laughs> Then the message level is okay. And let me think if I want to show you everything or not. Yeah, let me, let's do it on the side of. What is this minus side of? That means load and stay there waiting for commands. So I'm not playing any file. Now, I'm just loading the player and keep it in, in the idle state until I load the file, okay? Okay, then what we need is to get the input and the output. So, input. Let's call the input as standard input. And this input would be, okay, this is quite specific, but a pipe is basically a concatenation of streams. We are saying, okay, get the input stream of the M player and bind it to the variable named standard in. Okay, so we are attaching our script to the input and we can also attach, uh, attach the script to the output. So STD out equal to, oh, sorry. Uh, pipe also. Okay, and finally, shell equal to true. This is just for saying, okay, this is a command line program. It wants a, it sounds shell, so let let's recreate the same environment it would encounter if we launch the program from the command line on the on the PC. Okay, and this will be our layer. Now that we have a player, what do we want to do? Is to play. How can we ask the player to play? We send a command on the input that says load file. Okay, so we get the player. We said that the input is standard input. Okay, and we want to write, so this is a file. Right? You saw how, how to write a file. This is a file. Okay, we want to write what? The command, which is load file, the name of the file that in our case is, let me remember, blues.mp3. Oh, it's not semicolon. Okay, now. Let's just play for 10 seconds. 10 seconds, how can we count them? We need another module, which is time. Okay. And here we just type time dot sleep 10 seconds. After that, what we want to do is to stop. How can we stop? We should write the command on the input of the M player program. Okay, so player dot standard input. Um, 
sorry, dot, right? Let's say that we want to, oh, this wants a slash M. Uh, we want to exit, quit. Okay, so here we are sending commands in the same way a human would do in the console, but we are doing the same with the, with the script. Okay, let's see how many errors we have done. Same thing as before, but now we are controlling the player. So in principle, we can build up a multimedia player with this. What we need is to set up playing lists, scrolling files, and so on and so on. Okay, but the basic functionality is here. And again, is uh, four commands. Okay, so um, I don't think we have time for other exercises, but we can at least uh, have a very quick look at the, at the text, and then you can look at the solutions on the, on the website. Um, very, very quick, I, I promise. Okay, the one uh, uh, which I skipped before, uh, this basically uses the PSUtil uh, module. You can look at the manual so that you can also try to see how the manual is written and how you can you get the, the, the right commands. Um, it is really simple. Uh, if we have a look at the solution very quick. Um, matrix is here. Okay, for example, um, you see here. Yes, util virtual memory, get the information about the memory, and this virtual memory can be the total memory, the available memory, and so on, okay, the free memory. Um, you can get the CPU person, current, yes, util dot CPU person. So it's quite easy, but if you want to, the, to have access or the full documentation, look at the manual and try to implement the program by yourself, okay, and you get also the solution. And then the last one, which is much more complicated, but you can have a look at the solution. I'm, I'm not expecting you to, to, to write it down from scratch, if you are able, nice. But anyway, this is a kind of sum up of, of, of what uh, we have seen throughout this lesson, plus something else. And the program asks you to write a program that looks in your inbox folder, assuming that you are using Gmail, sorry, if you don't use Gmail, try to own someone friend or some friend account so that you can also sneak in your in uh, his emails. <laughs> but um, what basically the program should do is to get an access to the mailbox through EMAP, and there's a module for that. You see uh, there are those two modules, EMAP, lib, and email, okay? And once you get the access, get the number of new messages and for each of the new message, provide um, a simple summary and read the summary. Okay, it seems really, really complicated, but let's analyze the problem. We do know how to say something because we have the TTS module that we developed. And it can be used as a module. So we can write import TTS, the one that we wrote, and just called say. Okay, we don't need to rewrite it. Just reuse the entire module. Second, these libraries are well documented on the website, so you can have a look at them, at them and at least see how they work. So then, afterwards, you can look at the solution. Okay, this is not uh, really matching uh, any of the requirements in the project, so it, it is just for seeing how to structure a little bit more complex program, but it's there, okay? Okay, I think uh, we are almost done. Any question? Okay, perfect.